Welcome to the daily video update. I'm Reverend Oscar Sinclair for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. Today is Tuesday, July 21st, 2020. Religion changes people. The author uh, Dan Hodgkiss writes, Religion changes people. No one touches holy ground and stays the same. Religious leaders stir the pot by pointing out the contrast between life as it is and life as it should be, and urging us to close the gap. Religious insights provide the handhold that people need to criticize injustice, rise above self-interest, and take risks to achieve healing in a wounded world. Religion at its best is no friend of the status quo. Organization, on the other hand, conserves. Institutions capture, schematize, and codify persistent patterns of activity. People sometimes say institutions are conservative and smile as if they had said something clever. But conservation is what institutions do. A well-ordered congregation lays down schedules, puts policies on paper, places people in positions, and generally brings order out of chaos. Organizations can be flexible, creative, and iconoclastic, but only by resisting some of their most basic instincts. No wonder, then, that organized religion is so difficult. Congregations create sanctuaries where people can nurture and inspire each other, with results no one can predict. The stability of a religious institution is a necessary precondition to the instability that religious transformation brings. The need to balance both sides of this paradox, the transforming power of religion and the stabilizing power of organization, makes leading congregations a unique challenge. We know as far as religious organizations go that change is always hard. Dan Hodgkiss wrote that a while ago now, and it is as true today as when he wrote it. We are a transformative community. We are transformed by being a part of the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. And the Unitarian Church of Lincoln is an institution with all the small c conservatism that that entails. And just to be clear, neither Hodgkiss or I think that that's a bad thing. The great strength, one of the great strengths of religious communities is that they endure. To be a part of a congregation is to be a part of something that was around before we were and will continue once we're gone. And stewardship of that, from generation to generation, requires conservation that often expresses itself in skepticism toward change. Because we want the place we love to be here for the next seven generations. So change in congregations is hard and difficult work. And we know that change doesn't happen in a vacuum, right? So think about the last six months of your life. If you wrote down each day how stressed you feel on a scale of one to 10, what would the average be over the last six months? I'm guessing, because I know it's true for me, that for most of us, that average would be a little higher than normal. And when we're stressed, we know that our, our bodies and our minds and our souls crave the familiar. In normal times, this is also a great strength of religious communities, because in times when it feels like the center cannot hold, in times of deep grief or loss or uncertainty, you can still show up to church on Sunday, light a chalice, sing familiar hymns, and be with people who will help put you back together. You probably see where I'm going with this. This moment that we're in makes it really hard to change things. At the same time, it requires that we step away from the status quo. And the term of art for that combination of things is really weird and hard. That's what we're in right now. But sometimes hard things are necessary things. So tomorrow, we'll pick up with how we decide what to change.